see. All right, so uh, we're back, and uh, we're gonna start working on. Uh, hang on, move this up. Yeah, it's a little better. All right, so we're back. Uh, sorry about yesterday. Had some things come up in the fam. Uh, had some things to take care of, so couldn't do it yesterday. But we're back today. So um, we left off working on our uh, square mallet. Um, and since uh, the last video, um, I decided to do something to add a little interest to this project. Uh, and I'll be showing you that when we get to the handle. But uh, for now, uh, we turned the head square already. Um, switch around here and I went ahead and uh, took the time to sand uh, to sand the faces of this already um, and kind of soften up the corners a little bit so that's all ready to go um, so basically what's left to do on the head is we need just need to figure out how how big we want it and then go ahead and uh, part off the material we're not going to use so let me uh, grab a parting tool and we're going to start by working these areas down a little bit and then I'm going to use a spindle gouge to clean up those faces um, as small as I can get them and then I'll switch to a uh, and then I'll have to pull it off and use a uh, have to pull it off and maybe sand it a little bit so let me get a parting tool and uh, let's get cracking. Say, all right, I go with this one. So I don't really have a plan uh, for this, as usual. <laughs> so uh, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to waste a bunch of this material down uh, to the level of this uh, drive center, and then smooth as much of it as I can um, while it's still between centers. So that's the plan so far. Oh, help if I turn the lathe on. All right. And last time we drilled our hole and everything. Oh, wait, my lathe ain't plugged in. Hold on. Be right back. small shop life sometimes you got to unplug one thing to plug another thing in ah. sure some of you know what I'm going through here we go okay got my lathe plugged in now so we can get cracking all right so I'm gonna try Hey, Harold, I'm excited for you to be here, too. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to waste a little bit of this material to give me some room to work. Um, I'm going to start on this side, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to get the speed up pretty good. I want to get some decent cuts here. So the main thing I'm trying to do here is I want to, what I want to do is get rid of all those marks, uh, all those points where I had mounted it on these other axes to get the square shape. I want to definitely make sure those are gone before I do anything else. So that's why I'm going to take, uh, take away quite so much material and then take away just a little bit more so I can work this, I can work this face and then work the little nib down to a cone. So. Go ahead and take off a little bit more. Okay, I think that'll probably do for now. All right. And then I'm going to work this side with a spindle gouge. And uh, I'm going to work this side over here with the spindle gouge and get start to clean it up a bit. Uh, all right. In order to make a little bit of room, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna unlock the tailstock, and then I'm gonna extend the quill out. But I'm gonna hold this 
uh, life, the life center kind of there to keep a little pressure on it as I extend this out. This is just so that I can get a little bit of room uh, to work Oops. to work on the face of the, the mallet. Okay. So. All right. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be working this face right here. And uh, I'm going to be using, I switched to this view um, because this thing is in the way uh, for the tailstock. Oh, I didn't tailstock camera my laptops in the way too um so i switched to this view which isn't maybe not as good of you but let's see if i can uh since i do have a little bit of an adjustable kind of deal here let's see if i can't just move this gopro around and get the shot i'm looking for oh that might be better let's see if i can get it more centered All right, I'm trying to get you guys a better, better view of what's happening here. All right, I'm not quite sure how to get it to the other side of the screen, so we'll just run with it. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up now. I want to get the speed up, real, get the speed up relatively high. Pick the rest up, and then I'm going to cut across the face, uh, referencing the bevel. And we're going to get a nice clean surface on the end of the mallet. I'm running about 1300 RPM right now. You don't have to make it flat if you don't want to. You could have it... Uh, the end of the mallet can have a little bit of a dome shape, if you like that. Doesn't have to be perfectly flat, but that should be fairly clean. Yep. Um, that cut does a really good job uh, with the spindle gouge. That does a really good job, especially on ingrain. Um, the camera doesn't show it that well, but that's a that's a really really clean cut. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is. I'll bring this back up, back to where it was. Okay. Bring that back up to where it was. And then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure this distance right here so that the two halves are relatively, um, relatively even, even lengths. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's just a shop mallet, right? So that's two and three eighths. So two and three eighths this way. Ah, I guess I didn't really get it. I guess I didn't really get it all that centered to start with. Huh. Look at that. All right. So we're going to have a little less room to work on this side, which that's okay. Um, and because there's very little room to work over here, what I might do is uh, switch them, switch them, uh, switch them around, um, just to give me a little bit more room uh, to work on that. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of this material away. With the parting tool. So I'll make this mark a little darker so I can see it. All right. I'm going to come in here and start to waste away some of that material. Okay. I don't know if you saw that, but the parting tool kind of slid that way a little bit. So I may have taken off a little more than I meant to, but that's okay too. So now I'm going to flip this over so that I have more room to work. And I guess I'll have to keep, I guess what I'll have to do is alternate flipping this 
uh, end to end um, to get where I want to be with this. Just, that's fine. So now I can go ahead and do the same thing on this end. All right, keep your speed up. You want to rub that bevel? I'm gonna start working that down, uh, working that little nub down to get it as small as I can. Switch to a smaller spindle gouge. It's my three eighths inch detail gouge. I'm cutting the same way, uh, supporting off the bevel. I don't want to get this too small because I still want to be able to turn this around. So I can work on the other side a little bit. Okay. Alright. Yep, good. Got a nice clean cut there. So, I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty, pretty good. And then we're going to flip this around. And this will probably be the last time I flip it around. I'll probably part it off after this. Let's see. Make sure it's down there good and tight. Let's see. So, <clears throat> that's a good idea, Harold. Uh, but I'm actually planning on, uh, Harold suggested I scorch it, uh, burn it. Um, but actually, I'm going to take it in and put it, I'm going to do some engraving on the laser with it uh, once this is done with some logos and things like that. I might easily be persuaded into offering it up into a giveaway if people were interested enough. Try to get rid of a little bit of this. Okay, so <clears throat> I really want to make these two. I really want to make these two cones as small as possible because this is ingrain, so it's not going to sand uh, easily. So you want to get as good, a, you want to get as clean a cut as you can on the ends of this thing. Uh, you don't want to have to be doing a lot of sanding on this ingrain. So, so I'm gonna try to slide up in here and see if I can't <clears throat> get in here and take a little bit more out on this other side. See if you can see that. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna work because it's pretty tight quarters here, but we're gonna try and see. Switch hands. Yeah. It's working out all right. Some nice cuts in there. Yeah, that's about as far as I dare to go on that side. All right. So I'm going to get my uh, I'm going to get my Japanese saw, pull saw and cut that off and then we're going to start working on the handle. Alright, 
you go ahead and saw that off. Then I'll go back with a chisel. Oops. I go back with a chisel and uh, clean that face up and then sand it a bit. And it'll be right as rain. You want to make sure that you cut through this. You don't want to rip it because you'll end up with torn grain on the end. So we got a little bit of a new, we got a little bit of uh, rough material right there from the saw. Uh, a little bit of chisel work and some sandpaper and uh, we'll be good. And then I'll go back and round over these corners to keep them from breaking out as you're hitting things. And the face has, a it, this side's a little more rounded uh, than this side. Um, I'd like to tell you that I did that on purpose, but it's just a happy accident. <laughs> so, I got that, so let's get that out of the way. And let's get our handle blank set up. So, I said that I was going to do something kind of interesting with this, and I am. So, let's see. Eh. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to turn one end of this. I'm going to keep round, and the other end, I'm going to make a little square. So, I'm going to do the same off-axis uh, turning on one end of this and then try the goal is to try to bring it from square to round and have those two shapes kind of blend in together and then I'll do a little bit of decoration on the bottom of it um, I don't know how that's gonna work exactly but we're gonna find out together but I think it'll be cool and if I can get a I might try to see if I can't get some texturing on there too we'll see uh, what time a while what time a lot so we got our, we have our center marked, so we're going to get our compass. I also thought about making it so that it would be, um, I also thought about making a shape like a two, it would be two uh, additional points to make it more oval, but uh, I don't know, I just think the square would be better. So let me see if I can get this further down so you can see what I'm doing. So this is pretty standard fare uh, for as far as the square turning goes. Let me get this marked down in here. All right. Okay, so I have my center marked. And I just go ahead and draw a circle. That intersects all those, intersects both axes. And get a scratch all. And mark those, mark those points where they cross. Just like always. Also the middle. And do the same thing on this side, except this side, I'm only going to do the middle. And like I said, we're going to try to blend, we're going to try to blend four sides into, we're going to try to blend a square into a circle. That's what is the goal. And then with our center marks, then we'll put it back on the lathe. And, uh, let's see, with our center marks, then we'll put it back on the lathe and work out the final details so let's see all right and I'm gonna put the end with the extra points on it on this side because the uh, this half inch uh, drive spur is much smaller and I think it'll work um, I think it'll work a lot better for what we need to do with it than the uh, oops live center oops. well I just tested the shop toughness of my mallet head because I just dropped it on the floor all right okay so first things first I'm gonna make it roughly round not exactly just roughly round all right, let me 
make sure we're clearing the rest. Yep. All right. Using my half inch bowl gouge. Go ahead and take the corners off. I just remembered one thing that I did not do yet that I need to go back and do and that's marking out the uh, the radius the radii uh, for the square sided and I got a little bit of tear out there, but I'm pretty sure we'll work that out as we go. So let's go ahead and pull this off and mark those uh, radius, mark those points so we have a good idea of where to stop cutting. Let's see if we're too close. All right. So basically, what I need to do is just intersect out here about halfway. And go around and do all four. Oops. Probably want it a little bigger than that. There we go. I'll do that first one again because I adjusted the pencil a little bit. So I have a rough guide of where to stop cutting. So I got this roughly rounded. So I'm going to go ahead and start mounting these in the off in the off axis off center positions. Okay. And I'm going to keep my tool rest kind of perpendicular or parallel. Try to keep my tool rest parallel to the bed as much as I can. Okay. Make sure I got enough tension on it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start to uh, cut these. We're gonna go ahead and start to cut the square side of the handle. Let me move this back a little bit. Check, good. All right, let's see if we got any questions yet. Hey, Chili Man, how's it going? Jeff? Let's see. Thought I saw a question in there. A 3 8 inch detail gouge, I use that all the time. I use it for uh, detail work as well as uh, finials and, and uh, little fine details and things like that. I love that thing. See. Chili Man says he uses a skew, but I'm, man, <laughs> I would love to use a skew more often, but sometimes it just, I just can't get it right. I just can't get right with it. Welcome, Rexby. Glad to have you here. David, Misfit, and Terry. Oh, hey, Terry. What's up, man? So, anyway, we're going to. I'm going to get back to this now and I'm going to start cutting the um, cutting those larger arcs that are going to form the square side on this end of the on this end of the blank and then try to and like I said we're going to try to blend that into a round on the other side. So here we go. See. 
I never done this before, so I don't really know what to expect. So <laughs> I guess we're all going to be surprised together. See if I can't get a better cut than that. see what we got see if that's not better all right that's a little better that little bit right there <clears throat> that little bit of tear right there is going to be a, a problem see that already so I've been working on cutting more carefully to get straighter sides So I don't have to spend so much time sanding. So I'm watching the horizon line. I'm watching my horizon line on the back side of this piece um, to get a better idea of just how straight a cut I'm getting. Feeling pretty good about that. So that's pretty straight. I'm pretty happy about that. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. I even managed to get rid of most of that. Uh, I even managed to get rid of most of that tear out bit there, torn out bit. So now we're going to move to the next. We're going to move to the next point. There we go. Okay. Checking the tool rest as always. Make sure we have enough clearance. Here we go. Oops. It does help when you're doing this, um, particularly when you're watching that horizon line back there. It helps a lot to put a light, but I don't use it when I'm doing the lives because um, it makes it uh, harder to get the it makes it just degrades the quality of the video picture but if you watch it you can see exactly where your cuts going one thing that really helps with getting a straighter cut is not talking <laughs> while you uh not talking while you're cutting the thing, but you know, kind of would make for a pretty boring live, so I just make do. So I'm cutting all the way to the end, which you really don't have to because we're going to do some things on the end, like uh, we need to turn down a tenon, and uh, we turn down a tenon, and I'm probably going to, there's probably going to be a bit of this that uh, I'm going to turn down round and put some details in, uh, maybe with the uh, Robert Sorby spiraling and texturing tool. So I don't really have to, you know, if you're going to try this, you don't really have to worry about this side down here. So... I can't really tell how that's working. Uh, let's see. I can definitely tell that it's square on this end, but I'm not sure how that transition looks. I guess we'll just have to keep working it and, and see how it goes. I thought it was a pretty good idea, though. Let's see. Let's see. My buddy, uh, my buddy Dax from J and D Creations is the one who inspired me to uh, turn this off-axis thing into a hammer. Let's see, I hope I'm doing his concept justice.
Okay. Man, some parts of this piece of cherry just do not want, just does not want to turn cleanly. Try to go the other way. See if that helps. I'm thinking no. Go back to this way. Okay. All right. So we got one more side to go. So here's something that I didn't expect. Um, it turns out that this side, the square side, which makes sense uh, now that I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> The square end of this is actually quite a bit smaller than the round side now. I didn't think about that, but it does make sense. Maybe a couple more passes will get that straight. Oops. Okay, so now we have a square on this end and round on this end. So the first order of business, we're going to get this thing mounted back between centers on both ends. All right. And like I said, this end is now quite a bit bigger. Oops. This end is now quite a bit bigger than this end, which is not a big deal because I need to take this side down anyway uh, to meet our tenon. So let me grab my calipers here. I don't remember what size that bit I used for that. So let's take a look and see. Lock that down. And then I get me a ruler. <laughs> And we'll see how big that is. I think it's three quarters. Yep, three quarters. All right. So I'm going to use a tool that I bought from uh, Peter Galbert. I don't get to use it that often, but it is pretty cool. I'll share that with you. This is the Galbert caliper. See, it's got lots of metal on it, so it's going to be hard to show it real well. So this is the Gal Galbert caliper. And basically what this is for is for spindle turning. Uh, Peter Galbert makes um, Windsor chairs and he does a lot of spindle turning uh, for his chairs. And uh, so he makes a lot of tenons and it's, this tool is very, uh, makes sizing tenons very easy because basically what happens is this V groove, this V opening on the side here uh, fits around your workpiece and this plunger goes in and out 
and there's a gauge on the top that tells you how big your um, parts are. So um, if I had a three quarter inch dowel, which I don't think I have one handy, but uh, what you can do before you start, I know this one's calibrated, but to calibrate it, what you can do is take a, um, take a piece that's this right, the same size you need, like a three quarter inch dowel, and you press that in there and you can check it and see, um, you can check it and see just how close it is. So basically what I would do, basically what I'm gonna do is start to cut the tenon on this end and then I'll hold the tool this way. And then as, it, as the part gets smaller and smaller, the gauge will uh, start to show me the reading and then I'll know when I get down to three quarters. Let's see. Let me see if I can move this over a little bit, give a better shot of that. All right. So let me get my go back to my parting tool, and we're going to go ahead and um, size this tenon using the Galbert caliper. Okay. So I'm going to size the very end of this down. Because I won't probably waste that away. And I'm also going to kind of control the length of this thing now. Mm, I think I'm pretty happy with it. And I need to know how deep it is. So I'm going to use the tent, use the calipers again to look at how deep this is. How deep this tenon needs to be. Or how long tenon needs to be. So it looks like it's about an inch, mm, let's see what is that, an inch and a quarter plus a sixteenth, so an inch and five sixteenths is where it looks like we are. So I need to make, I need to make a mark an inch and five sixteenths on my blank here. So I know how far to go. And it's not really round, so you kind of got to like put, use a little less pressure on the pencil to keep from breaking the tips off. Okay, so we got all that worked out. So now let's turn our tendon down. I know we're a good ways from three quarters, so I'm just going to go ahead and waste away. A good portion of this material. I'm just gonna double check here. Yep. Okay. So now, time to bring in my caliper. Hoping this will, this is going to show well, but we'll see. I'm going to crank the speed down just a hair. And then, so basically I'm going to put this on and press that point in. And right now, I'm at about an inch. I'm at about an inch and a quarter. So start working this down. Okay. So I see that what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to waste a little bit more of this because uh, the live center is in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and waste this down just a little bit further. I think I'm at about an inch right now. So now I'm bring this back in. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but that's at about an inch. And I come in here, and that is seven eighths. Three quarters. All right, so I'm gonna get the rest of this down to about that, and then I'll go back in with the caliper and remove the last of the material.
Okay. So then I'm going to go back in with this and get down to my final size. I'm going to start back here in the back. Got just a little ways to go. Okay. So now I know that this is three quarters and this is three quarters. So I just take the rest of this material down. In between. And then I'm going to switch to, actually I can do it with this one. Just going to remove that little bit right there off the end. Then I'm going to check it. And make sure it fits. Yeah, it's a little tight, but it does fit. So I'll probably take off just a little bit. Take off just a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and shape the handle. And we'll get ready to wrap this puppy up. Okay, I'm going to take off just a little bit. All right, let's check it one more time. See where we're at. All right, that's good. Good fit, doesn't fall out. Perfect. So now, I can put it back in here and all I have to do is turn it to the shape I want. Oops. Whatever shape or designs I wanna put on it. Um, and then we'll be good. So the first thing I'm going to do is thin this area up here out just a little. Uh, probably use a bowl gouge for that. Get my speed back up. I need some better cuts. I don't want to cut it down to the same level um, because I'm actually going to shorten this just a little bit uh, so that it'll bottom out in the handle or in the head. And I'm I'm kind of thinking about putting a little slot in there and putting a wedge that so when I drive it in, it'll open it up. But uh, we'll see how that goes too. So I got that going. That's good. So let's look at what, we, what we're looking at. So I can still see that the handle gets smaller down here than it is up here. So I wanna get rid of some of this mass in here and do something with that. But I don't wanna to lose too much. Well, there's not much of a transition. I guess the piece wasn't long enough or uh, I didn't put the points out far enough to really get the kind of transition I was looking for between the square end and the round end, but that's okay. Um, I'll pick a place in here and I'll make a pretty, I'll try to make as, do the best I can to make a cool transition and I'll transition it down and I'm gonna do a, a couple of things with the uh, texturing tool. So I wanna get, definitely wanna get rid of this, get rid of this material right here. Okay. Okay, so I did actually end up with a pretty nice transition right there. Um, not sure how well it shows, but you go from that square and you have these 
uh, corners that kind of drop um, as the round as the round portion kind of meets that square area. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do some, uh, I don't know, maybe a spiral or something like that in this area right here. So let's get our, let's get our tools ready, see what we can do. So maybe just a little bit of a hatch. Just a little bit of a hatch pattern see if we got some questions I haven't been looking up there very often uh, let's see How's it going, my tech? All right, so I'm gonna, let's see. I'm gonna use one of these spiraling tools and I'm gonna put some, uh, I don't really know what the right word is to call them, but I'm gonna put some, um, I can't remember, uh, some hash marks on here. So I'm gonna crank this down about 700 RPM or so. And then, here we go. And if I don't like it, I'll just cut it off. See what kind of marks that's giving me. Yep, that's what I want. All right. So, just come in here. see what we got okay I can work with that all right so then I'm gonna take the tool and it's a good idea to flip sometimes to flip this over but I think it's in there tight enough it won't come out um, but so basically the way I did that is I had the tool rotated 45 degrees and wrote and the bar rotated 45 degrees out over the tool rest so what I'm gonna do in this case so I'm going to take this, I'm going to rotate it back 45 degrees. Let's see. Yeah. Rotate it back 45 degrees and rotate my approach 45 degrees and I'm going to traverse the other direction. And I'm giving it moderate pressure, not too much. All right, and that gave me pretty much what I wanted. So when you do that um, on certain woods, it's going to have a little bit, there's going to be some little fibers that break off on the surface. To get rid of those, just grab yourself a handful, um, just grab yourself a handful of shavings, and you can burnish those off. Crank the speed up a bit, and you can burnish them off using shavings. You don't want to sand it because you'll lose your pattern. Okay. All right. And that feels much better. I don't know if that shows, but yeah, I think you can see it a little bit. So now I just have to take care of the transition from here to there and uh, I'm pretty much be done. I'll sand the, uh, I'll sand the base of this and uh, yeah, we'll have a handle. So let me see, what weapon am I going to use to do this? So I'm going to drop the handle down, the rest down a bit. So come in here. All right, so I want to just clean this up. And I'm going to make a few little divisions right there. Switch to my detail tool, detail gouge. All 
I'm just winging it. I don't really have any plan for this. This is why one of the main things that I use my uh, detail gouge for is for little things like this, little little details and um, little details at transitions and things like that. probably a little fancy for a, a tool handle but it'll do and get rid of that I don't like that all right okay so then I'm gonna go ahead and sand the back of this and then we're gonna turn I'm gonna turn a little detail for the bottom and uh, that's gonna be pretty much it so again when you're sanding these square when you're sanding these square faces you want to use a platen right something that won't uh, remove the square shape that you've worked so hard for and give this just a little bit of a sanding and then I'll go back and part the end of it off. It's a lot easier to do this on the lathe, you know, because this is kind of small. Be pretty, be a little. It might be a little difficult to handle uh, by hand. So try to do the bulk of it while it's on the lathe. Um, in this case, because I'm doing a demo uh, and I want to get this thing completed, um, I'm not going to do all the sanding uh, right now. I'm just going to go ahead and part it off. So now move over to this side a little bit all right and then I'm gonna go ahead and first of all I'm gonna cut away this material because there's all those little divots and holes from the five different points I had to use to mount it and then I'm gonna turn this I'm gonna turn this down just a bit try to see if I can't get a good clean face on it yeah that's not gonna be clean where's my detail gouge so that's gonna be tricky being this close to the headstock but we'll see see how it goes I probably should just come back a little further there we go. There we go. Still trying to get the hang of using my other cutting with my other hand. Okay. Come back with the parting parting tool. Work a lot of that out. cut from the side and that's probably about as far yeah that's as far as I can cut so I'll go ahead and use my uh, Japanese saw cut that off oh before I do that I'm gonna take a little bit off of this end or at least I'm gonna start to with the thin parting tool take just a little bit off um, okay. All right. And then I can use my saw and cut that off. So now use my saw, come in here and I'm going to cut, I'm going to try to leave a little bit of that material there so that I have some stuff to work with. Uh, while I'm sanding. 
because I don't want to have an indentation if I can help it. And I got to be careful not to hit the the point on my live center or a drive spur there. Okay. So I sev severed those fibers. And we should be good to go. Oh, not quite. Bring this back out. I'm going to cut this off the rest of the way off. Okay. Um, that doesn't look too bad. Take a little sanding, uh, maybe a little chisel work, and uh, be right as rain. So now, let's put these two pieces together. And like I said, what I'm actually going to do, um, I'm going to have to take off a little bit more because I got a little more uh, material sticking out right there than I want. So what I'll do is I'll cut that. I'll cut that... Um, I'll cut that off a little bit and then I'm going to put a slot in here and put a wedge so that when I drive this in uh, the wedge will hit the bottom of the hole and it will expand the, the shank and uh, it'll expand the shank and then lock it lock it in with, along with the glue. So I just noticed that this hammer is not actually on there square. <laughs> so maybe I need to do a little bit of uh, a little bit more work with that uh, drilling the drill wizard that I got that I showed you guys last week so let's go back to this view and here is my square mallet complete with a neural texture up there not really for grip more for decoration and you can see that the end is the end has that lovely rounded square uh, detail ignore the little booger there on the bottom that's something I'm gonna attend to later and uh, you know I like it and uh, once I get my once I get my slot and my wedge cut in here and and drive that thing in there it's gonna be I think it's gonna be pretty handy and uh, it does have it's not on there square um, that's unfortunate but uh, <laughs> that's just the way it went um, trying out new toys and all that kind of stuff, but uh, other than that, I think it turned out great So like I said, I'm gonna probably take it in and and uh, Take it into the laser and, and laser engrave some things on here my logo for sure um, And maybe a couple little designs or something who knows um, And like I said, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't be too hard to convince me uh, In the comments to offer this up as a giveaway if somebody was so inclined uh, to have this so Let's see. Um, yeah, I get Jeff was talking about a pretty interesting gizmo. I guess he's, you're talking about the uh, the Galbert caliper. Um, yeah, I have used it. I've been able to use it a few times. It's always been very, very helpful. So uh, for sizing tenons, it's actually uh, super, super valuable. I think you can get it on his website, petergalbert.com, if I'm not mistaken. If you're interested so all right yeah uh, knurling is the word I was looking for uh, thank you Jason so anyway that's it that's our uh, that's our mallet um, I'll post I get some uh, finish on it and uh, finish up the last few details uh, over the course of the next few days and I'll post it on Instagram um, so you guys can see it and like I said um, either uh, leave a comment here or leave a comment on Instagram if you guys would like for this to be offered up as a giveaway. So, um, anyway, looks like uh, that fit, that wraps that up. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'll be doing next week, but uh, I should be here with another project. And uh, thank you guys all. Thank everybody for uh, coming out. And, um, you know, well, we didn't have to go very far, but <laughs> for uh, joining me in the shop watching this video and uh, checking out the making of this project I hope that you all will try it and if you do please send me um, tag me um, in your post so that I can see uh, what you came up with so anyway all right guys so that's it for me um, thanks good night uh, remember get out in your shops make a mess have fun dread not and make something peace <laughs>